What's up, everybody? I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. This is another one of our Lessons from Beyond the Grave, where we take a look at some of the clips from my stream where I died, and we break down the fight and talk about what happened and what I could have done better uh, next time. This video is all about repositioning in the middle of fights and how it can save your life a lot um, and be the, the difference between winning and losing a fight. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. And if you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and potentially subscribing uh, for more content like this. That helps me out a lot. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So as always, what we'll do is we'll watch the clip back in its entirety, and then we'll go back and kind of rewatch it and talk through exactly what happened. So let's go ahead and roll the clip. Dead. I thought, dude, it sounded like he was running the other way. So always watching these back. It's always funny to see how it all went down. But the context here is I was doing with a buddy on labs and we were kind of in this back hallway here and we had constantly been hearing these guys up in this hallway running around and moving and shooting raiders and looting and we were shooting raiders back here. And so we were kind of trying to figure out what was happening and we heard some movement so I was holding this angle because I had heard movement and then the audio. So this this was kind of at first I thought it was like a bug and I was super frustrated, but it was just kind of like the one two punch. These guys actually ended up coming back in chat and saying that they was, were hearing us, which isn't a surprise, too, because we were shooting back there as well. And uh, this guy close to me told his buddy to run down the hallway. Um, so that audio cue was a good audio cue on my part that he was running down the hallway uh, and at first I was so frustrated because I was like, I, it sounded like he was running the other way. Well, that's because the second guy was. So we can listen to that audio again. That audio gets further away. I can tell he's moving right to left and he's running down the hallway. Um, now, when we're talking about repositioning and what we could have done better, this guy obviously took me by surprise. I was getting ready. I was getting ready to aim, peek this corner, and then hit this guy moving, um, moving down towards the other end of the hallway. Uh, I had no idea this guy was here. I don't know if him moving was an audio bug or if he was just standing here. And then right as I was peeking it, he started moving as well. But I was really, really surprised by this guy. But managed to make it out of the very first encounter here. So at this point, I've pushed him back behind a corner. He's pushed me back behind a corner. Now, I think my fault here was re-peaking this and re-peaking it pretty wide. I mean, I was just, my momentum here was just going to take me right back around that corner. I, I should have known that he was going to re-peak. So right here, basically, he goes around this corner and my mindset is that he's, you know, hugging this left wall, that he's just still going to be there and I'm going to peek around. So as I'm peeking here, you see my gun is not facing where he is or where I should have known he was going to be. I was kind of pointing it. I was hooking it around the corner and he went for a wide peek. So one of the things I could have done was just assume the peak and more like waited. I could have hugged this wall and kind of waited for him to peek. But I think this was an opportunity because now I know there's two of them or I could have known. At this point, I thought it was a bug and it was just this one guy. But I could have potentially thrown a grenade or came back to try and find cover behind some of these things. Um, that's not always the case because he was going to re-peak here, um, most likely no matter what, because he peaked me. But there's a lot of different stuff here, a lot of ways I could have gotten out of this fight. Um, especially if I backed up and suppressed. Suppression is something that people don't use too often. But if I kept my, if I kept facing him and backed up and just kind of kept popping some shots off, I could have potentially gotten back out into that hallway. Um, so th th there was a few different ways I could have handled this. Just peeking right back at him, wide, not tight against the wall, aiming the wrong way, um, not even head height as far as where my gun is pointed. Um, and, you know, I could have taken an opportunity to run back because he was peeking this hallway. He wasn't peeking the door. Does that make sense? Like he was shimmying back and forth a few feet through the doorway 
and it probably would have taken him a few seconds to actually rotate. He was going to peek and rotate out the door, and I could have taken those few seconds to pull back to maybe this position and hold the door or throw a nade or even back through the door behind me. I could have met up with my buddy, and we could have then taken the situation. So, you know, it's hard. Sometimes you see a fight and you just want to take it. You just want to repeat the guy, drop it, neutralize the threat and move on. But in this case, there was a few things I could have done with a two X optic. I'm a little less comfortable and I, I was fully ADS at the time that I saw that guy. And that really kind of messed up my point fire, messed up how I wanted to engage that fight. Um, it was super surprising. So Definitely could have done some things different here. Let's take a look at the next clip. So the context here for this clip is I'm trying to do silent caliber where I have to kill PMCs and scavs with a suppressed shotgun. So I'm in shoreline. I'm also maybe trying to do some loot and I'm hearing a bunch of noise above me. At this point, I've heard them running around and jumping. And so uh, I, I can tell that it's more than one. I don't want to push it. I am very not comfortable or proficient with shotguns. So what I'd rather do is take an angle where I think that they might eventually come and wait for them to expose themselves. So let's see what happens here. So pretty easy to figure out what I did wrong there and what I could have done better. Uh, I was proud of the trigger discipline in this situation because I knew that there was two. I heard him jumping around upstairs. And if I shot that first guy, this guy is so close to the stairs. He could have gone upstairs. He could have gone through this room on my left. He could have started nade spamming me down here. And I wanted to wait until I saw both. I wasn't at that point positive. I could have even been a three man. I didn't know. So I waited until I can see them both. Nobody else was coming around the corner and I took some shots on the guy and I dropped him and I was able to do that. Immediately, I probably should have moved and repositioned because it was pretty clear where I was. They had just cleared upstairs. They had cleared this corner. If I was in front of them, the guy in front would have died, not the guy behind. Where else could I be? So it was pretty clear. They looked geared. They looked pretty kitted out. So why... I, I should have pulled back a little bit, especially in shoreline when you're looking at, inside, when you're looking through these dark corners. Because you can see here, he repeaks, but it actually takes me a little bit because maybe my eyes were over here. I was trying to figure out if he was going up the stairs. It takes me a second because this isn't, he's not silhouetting, he's blending in. You know what I mean? If the sun was behind him, I would have noticed that peak much quicker. Uh, another thing I could have done, to be honest with you, if I was going to hold the peak, was to put my optic head height right about here um, because most likely he's not going to swing around the corner and just try and bum rush me. If he's going to peek, he's going to peek around the corner. So I wasn't, I was close, but I was low and I wasn't up against the wall. If I was had my reticle right about here, I could have maybe snapped to him. And right there, I take a shot that's a, I, I was given another opportunity to reposition. So as soon as I dropped the first guy, I probably should have backed off. Maybe not ran away, but at least put myself in cover to listen to what this other guy is going to do. Um, or even take, a, take another position. I could have killed this guy and gone through this room and gone upstairs and come down this staircase. I could have done a lot of things. And then I take a shot at this guy for sure at this point, letting him know exactly where I was. So holding... After the first engagement where I killed the first guy, holding isn't a terrible idea. I probably should have repositioned. But he knows the general direction I'm at. He doesn't know exactly where I'm at. I could have been laying underneath here. I could have been a few different places. At this point, when he peeks and I take a shot at him, now he knows exactly where I am. And I was given another opportunity to pull back, but instead I chose to kind of hold the ground. Um, and he peeks. I take a few more shots. I, at the last minute, decide... <laughs> to kind of fall back. Um, but uh, it looks like maybe a little bit of desync, whereas my character is obviously behind cover right here, but he gets a, a quick tap on me. 
and I die. So once again, it's all about figuring out in those split second decisions in the middle of a fight when moving away and gaining uh, an advantage, or even if you can't move to a place that gives you an insane advantage, giving you a place that gets you out of a disadvantage. So at this point, the visibility is rough. I'm not proficient with shotguns. I've got to hit my shots. These guys look like they've got gear. He has something full auto and he can just take me out. I, I've exposed him to exactly where I am. Uh, if I was a better shot, I could have, he gave me an opportunity to get the headshot on him, but I missed and I ended up dying here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final clip for this one. So similar situation here. We're on labs. I'm with a buddy. We're pushing up. We heard a guy all the way at the end of this hall. We'd even taken some previous shots at him because we heard him uh, pull that button. So we swung around and we were looking down there. He tried to go out of the room. We took some shots. He went back into the room. So the thought here is that like when you're in that room at the end of the hallway, he can't go anywhere but out. So if I'm holding the long angle, my friend was going to push up, maybe open that door, get within nade distance. The goal was to kind of create a situation where, you know what I mean? He just couldn't really do anything and we were going to try and maybe take some shots at him. So that's what was going on here. Let's take a look at the what actually happened. But I'm definitely not. Oh, he pushed out. He pushed here. out. He's fully out. He's fully out. I'm dead. Are you alive? So, <laughs> so that was that was a rough one. Um, the <laughs> this guy is the full Chad with the with the bunny hops and the refrigerator on his back. Um, so he's leaping and bounding with his moon shoes on all over the place. Uh, he finally gets to a corner and I can tell, you can see with that tiny little bit of movement, he's going to peek it. I ADS and I see him move from right here over to here. So he's, he's going to go for the lean peek. I tried to get him with a tap through the door. Um, and then he peeks and I feel like I landed a few good shots here. Like if we slow it down, it feels like, um, I hit one or two good shots on his face, but I don't know if it was decent or if it didn't register, but that shot right there felt pretty good. And then a few of those other ones, definitely what I could have done better though, was the fact that we were taking shots at him earlier, right here. I take two more shots at him. And what I should have done here was absolutely fall back. So I'm not hitting my shots. And this guy is bunny hopping around. It's hard though. This is one of those situations that's hard because I feel like I've got a good angle on him. I feel like I've got a few good shots on him. I was fully expecting him to drop um, and he didn't. So I was just like holding the angle. But when, to be honest with you, I should have known better in a situation like that where this guy obviously does this a lot. He's just jumping around. He's holding angles. He's taking a fight, a 1v2. Um, and I've stayed in the exact same spot the whole time, even crouching and then peeking around here or pulling back and tossing a nade down. Anything I could have done, I just stood still. When he was bunny hopping around, I'm sure he was free looking to the right to see where I was. I really thought I hit the shot, but um, it's one of those things where you should never... Some of the guys that do this really, really well will peek, take the shot, and then fall back, even if it was good or not, and then re-peek and see that it was a good shot. Uh, me just like waiting for him to fall dead was probably it gave him it ultimately is what gave him the opportunity to get the shots on me. So um, it's all about repositioning. I find myself this is one of those things, which is why I wanted to make a video about this, that I uh, find a, kind of breaking down a lot on stream is that if a firefight doesn't end in the first second, it's all a mind game at that point of who's in control Who's got the advantage? Do they know where I am? It's a lot to think about in a split second. And that's all part of the learning process of getting better. But finding a way to reposition, to, to get the unknown back where they don't know exactly where you are, maybe the general area, gives you an opportunity to maybe take control of a fight. Um, right after this, after he killed me, my buddy that was up here did end up killing this guy. So he, he didn't get away with it. But um, I did give him the opportunity to kill me, and he did. So... Um, so that's that. Those are a few clips. I hope that breaking down my gameplay um, helps and I hope it encourages you to do the same. There's a lot of um, 
instances where I think someone's cheating or I think there's no way I should have killed that guy and then I can watch it back and see that maybe I was off to the left or just above him a little bit. Uh, this has been a huge thing in me getting better at the game and I hope that it helps you as well. Thank you so much as always for taking the time to check out this video. Uh, if you have any questions about the video, if there's anything you'd like to see me make in the future, please drop a comment down below. Once again, like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more content like this. I'm always trying to create content that helps shorten the learning curve of the game and gets you and your raids having fun as soon as possible. Like I said, I do stream on Twitch. All those links will be down below. We have a discord that is full of people that's willing to answer questions, help with quests, run raids, all sorts of stuff like that. That link is down below as well. Thank you so much again for stopping by and I will see y'all on the next one.